welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to pick up with my um, Living with an Alcoholic series. Um, I think the last video I did was back in the summer, probably around uh, the end of July. And here it is winter already. So um, let's see if I can think of some more stories to tell y'all about living with uh, John L. Sullivan, who was um, a, a very heavy uh, beer drinker. <laughs> I don't know if there's any difference in an alcoholic who drinks um, bourbon and whiskey and rum and vodka or, or if they're all the same, whether it's beer or alcohol. But anyway, John had a good job. Uh, he was, you know, still working at the, the scrap yard there in Covington, Louisiana called P&W Industries. And uh, he was making enough money to where I was able to quit my job at um equitable shipyards there in Madisonville, Louisiana. So, uh, you know, by that time, uh, Jason was about um, about seven years old, and um, Jeremy was two years old, and um, uh, Jill was not born yet. So this is a birthday cake that I had made for Jason. Uh, I think he was, um, let's see, probably about eight years old. It was a lion. <laughs> I guess that was licorice that I used for his whiskers. But I do remember making that cake that day, and I always love to bake. Y'all know that from watching my cooking videos. And here's a picture of Jeremy. He had um, gotten into my cabinets and got out that old um, electric skillet. Oh, I cooked many meals in that electric skillet. He's got him a can or something. Oh, but that's my little Jeremy sitting in that electric skillet. <laughs> And then we had taken the children to um, Audubon Zoo and Park there in New Orleans one day. And they have a little train that goes through the, the zoo. So that's a, a picture of Jason and Jeremy with John riding on the train there at Audubon. If y'all ever go to New Orleans, uh, make sure you go down in the Garden District now off of um, Claiborne Avenue and, and go see Audubon Park and Zoo. It's, it's a fabulous place. Uh, they have some old, old, old oak trees that are just covered in Spanish moss. You're going to love it. And then here's a picture of um, me and, and Jeremy. There he is with his little sand pail. And uh, that was probably taken on the beach in, um, in Biloxi or Gulfport, Mississippi. I, I didn't write it on the back, so I don't really know. You can see Glenda Merle used to be skin and bones, I tell you. <laughs> oh, I wish I could uh, be that thin again. But anyway, um, so John and I had been married on September the 27th, uh, 1971. So at the end of this summer that I was just showing y'all those pictures of, um, you know, it was getting close to our anniversary. Well, we had never really gone out and celebrated it because we couldn't afford to. But uh, he was making pretty decent money. So we looked around and asked around and finally got a babysitter. So we, um, there was a restaurant that had just opened there in Covington. Uh, they had made a restaurant out of the old train depot. And uh, it was called the depot. And it was supposed to be very, um, you know, expensive and with the, the linen tablecloths and the waiters with the... Um, you know, the their napkins or whatever, you know, draped over their arms and they would come around and refill your ice water and and you know, refill your bottle of your glass of wine and everything. So we were so excited to get to go out to the depot to eat. So we went in there and it was packed and um we did have reservations so we didn't have to wait too long. So our table was right in the center of the restaurant. So it, it had, um, it, was, it wasn't that big, you know, a little train depot is, is not that big. But uh, they had extended a little part onto it. So there was a step that went up and then there were some more tables, you know, over to the, the far back side. But our table was right smack dab in the center. So, of course, this was on a Saturday and John's routine on Saturday was to get up real early and he would cut the grass and do the yard work. And then he would come in and, and vacuum. And we had a big kitchen. So he would sweep and mop the kitchen. And he would drink a whole pot of coffee. Well, by 12 o'clock, he was ready to hit the Budweiser. So he would just drink and drink and drink until he passed out. So that particular Saturday, 
By the time we got to the depot, I'm sure he had already had a six-pack or more of Budweiser. So he was already, you know, either drunk or, or well on his way to being drunk. So we go and we sit down and we order the food and we're chit-chatting and having a good time and everything. But he's getting, he's getting to be a little bit, you know, I could, I could see that he was getting drunk. And um, so I was kind of get, getting worried a little bit. But I thought, well, if we can just, you know, get some food in his stomach and he can eat, then everything will be good. So we're sitting there eating, and then all of a sudden, the, the waiter with this, you know, fancy linen cloth draped over his arm, actually, he was the owner, he came over with a bottle of wine, and he said, oh, this gentleman over here, pointing to that area that was, you know, had the step up, he wanted to send you a bottle of wine. So we look over there and wave, and it's the owner of P&W Industries, the scrapyard where John was working. So he, um, you know, he said hi to us, and he came over, and so we told him it was our anniversary, and so he congratulated us and everything. So, so we had, you know, poured us a glass of, of the wine. So John, you know, he had been drinking Budweiser all day, so he, he got the wine, and he just started gulping it down, just gulp, 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 gulp. I mean, I could hear, even hear him gulping it. Well, then he took the bottle and poured him another glass, and he gulped it down, y'all. And then all of a sudden, he just started vomiting right into his plate. Just a big old pile of disgusting vomit. And here I am, y'all. I could have died. I don't think I've ever been so embarrassed and humiliated in my entire life. And I was just hoping and praying that his boss didn't see him. So that waiter with that linen cloth over his arm, he comes over and, you know, tries to hide the vomit with the cloth and cover it up and everything. So here I am trying to get John up and get him out of there. Y'all, we left out of there so quick. I don't even think that we paid for the meal. <laughs> but y'all, I was so humiliated. I just wanted to kill him. Oh, it, it was just, it was horrible. It was just horrible. And needless to say, he got fired from his job that next week. Yeah, the, the owner had uh, the scrapyard seen it, as everybody else in the restaurant did. So, y'all, if you're, if you're dating somebody and, and they have a drinking problem, then you need to really con reconsider whether you want to spend any more time with that person because um, it does not get better. It gets worse. And I appreciate y'all watching, and please watch my little ads, and just keep on coming back. Bye, guys.